try and just come out with an onslaught against yeah. Alex, prevent the trick room. If Alex can maneuver a trick room up, it's going to be very hard for Hengwai to manage that. Indeed, but we are here for round four, day one, Liverpool Pokemon Regional Championships. And P2 is on the field, accompanied by that Incineroar versus the Chi Yu and Fluttermain over on Hengwei's side. This is a bit of a clash between older formats, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> versus the new meta. Yeah, it is completely that. I think the Chi Yu needs to be very careful here what it does, unless it does go for that terrestrialization, but you're committing because. The fake out does threaten to break your focus ash. It stops you in your tracks for at least one turn, and it makes you a bit more susceptible to getting taken down uh, subsequent turns after that. So I have to be careful with that. Do you want to commit to going for that terrestrialization just to avoid a fake out from the incinero here? It's a big question. Probably not. Do you want to readjust your board position and then utilize the Flutterman that is impervious to that, that fake out this turn to get some big damage off? Try and start tackling, taking down that Porygon too. But no, we do actually have to switch out right here which is a very interesting move and actually very calculated as Tin Lu is going to be bringing uh, the drop of the special attack offense uh, presence on the field with its aura, of course, whilst uh, we're going to actually notice the Flutter main up to go on the pure offensive. We're going to have a situation of, we've got Chi Yu's ability on the field, Tin Lu's sort of brought it back to a neutral stalemate right now. However, Chi Yu is likely going to try to focus down potentially on this Porygon too. Yeah, but we are going to see Terrestrialization on both sides. Oh. And one thing that the Porygon 2 has in its arsenal is that poison Terrestrialization, giving it a, 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 well, a, you know, resistance to those big fairy type attacks that could potentially come out here. And like you say, with that Vessel of Ruin ability on the Ting Lu, really going to help out, help you set that trick room up. But oh. into the Ting Lu here, not the Porygon 2, and a huge, huge attack. Wow, huge attack, but even greater survival. Just looking at that Ting Lu, must have been very well trained survives on five hit points there but lee we've got the trick room now set up Pokemon 2 isn't known to be the most offensive pokemon unless of course it does have that download special attack boost enhanced based around the opponent's pokemon stats but in this scenario you just want to try to get some more control on it, actually start chipping down both of these Pokemon. In particular, the Flutterman needs to be very careful this turn on Hengwai's side of the field because now the Porygon has terrestrialized into that Poison type. It does have access to Terra Blast, so it will yes. have a Poison type attack into that Flutterman, going to be super effective. Probably won't be enough to take it down, like you say, but will be a very impactful move. With the choice specs, it is locked into that one move, and that's why we're seeing Hengwai switch it out and keep it for later when the Trick Room is ended. But can Alex capitalize on these Trick Room turns, take advantage of them while they're in effect. And that's a really good switch out there. You're able to have Fake Out available the next turn and maybe even directly try to threaten down this P2 with any sort of ground type moves with high house horsepower. However, we do have the attack going on the offensive from that Porygon 2, dealing so much damage onto the Rillaboom. Combination with the Stomping Tantrum into the Chi Yu will be blocking that Focus Sash. However, the Chi Yu now is in a spot to try to get a Snarl off and it does succeed with both being able to now neuter even further the damage of this Porygon 2 and pick up the K on the team loop. Yeah, it's a really nice turn here from, from Heng Wai, even though it does look a bit bad for him at the moment with the Trick Room in effect. The P2, the Porygon 2 is in a great position. Losing the Ting Lu, not really that big a deal, I think, for Alex in this situation because it's kind of done the job that he needed to. It came in, he's probably bringing it in to protect the Porygon 2 to get the Trick Room up. Mm -hmm. So getting that initial damage onto the Chi Yu here, it's in knockout range going into this next turn. It really feels like it's forced to protect here because anything coming out from the Porygon 2 will probably be able to pick it up at this range. Yep. You've got the Incinero on the field now and you would suspect that it is slower than the Rillaboom, so it has that active fake out and go into the Rillaboom, prevent it from utilizing its own fake out and slowing your side of the field down if you're Alex. So, Heng Wai in a bit of a situation where I'm looking like maybe having to switch the Chi Yu out, mm -hmm. protect it here, because if you don't, you could be susceptible to going down another Pokemon this turn. Because what you're realistically trying to do here is just expire the turns of Trick Room uh, as much as you can, just wait for that opportune moment that it's just going to be completely gone. So yeah, we are actually going to go ahead and see that switch out right now. It's actually going to be the Earth for Rapid Strike, a really nice switch in here. However, Fake Out comes out and does block any move coming up from Corridon 2 for now. Although the trade has been exchanged, that Flare Blitz, you didn't see the Fake Out come out from the Incineral when it could have gone for it. However, more importantly, I think what Alex was trying to focus down on is starting to get rid of those switches.
switch out slots that Henway has available to himself. Yeah, and being able to remove the Relibu was a really nice choice there. Yes, you could have went for the fake out, but you can see it would have been a bit of a wasted turn here because, you know, the Urshifu isn't holding the focus sash. That's on the Chi so you're not really breaking a sash here. And you have the opportunity where the Relibu is not likely to go for the fake out into the Pori uh, into the Incinero, knowing that fake out's an option there. And you really want to slow down the Porygon too, stop mm -hmm. it from maybe going for a recover or an attack into one of your Pokemon, get something in for free, taking advantage of that turn to go for the Flare Blitz there and remove what could be a disruptive, supportive slot on Hengwai's side of the field and limit what he's able to do for the rest of this match. And in this scenario, once again, I think we've got this choice spec, uh, this uh, choice specs on the Flutter main. It may even be a bait to try to at least get the Chi Yu switch out going there. You just want to make sure that Trick Room has been expired. But how are you realistically getting rid of this Porygon 2? I, I don't see a very direct way for victory with the win condition. There isn't a direct way. And I think using the, the Flutter main as bait is almost a, a, a way to, to kind of get around that, to allow the maybe a, a shot here. Yeah, that is a huge attack into the Flutter Man. A wow. one hit KO. One hit KO. Um, uh, Porygon 2 just picking up names right now. Coming back from the past with a terror blast of immense force. Of course, the poison terror in that case. Uh, as we do actually have the parting shot from the Incineral focusing down on this Urshifu. Just realistically wanting to get the Piffa action going in order to enable the fake out on a following turn. But yeah, I, I think the right may potentially be on the wall for this game one as we are going to have that good old mushroom we all recognize a oh. moon guest being able to just sponge up all of that damage from that urge and probably do more back in return with that rocky helmet held item that it does have access to you can see it hitting the urge every time it makes contact with this moon guest probably doing more damage than the the uh, surging strikes did to the moon a great switch in here and alex really showing how to take advantage of your trick room turns when you get it set up and cut through the opposing team. Didn't expect the Flutterman to go down to that after the Snarl that the Porygon 2 had taken, obviously reducing the special attack there, but such a powerful Pokemon into this environment. And uh, Hengwai's back is definitely against the wall now. You know, the Chi Yu's a great Pokemon mm -hmm. against the Amoongus, but has got enough to be able to get through the next couple of turns. And always, you've got to think there is an Incineroar looming in the back. It can come in at any point. Yep. You're probably safe to switch it in on that Amoongus slot because it's not likely that the Urshifu is going to attack into that Pokemon because of the Rocky Helmet. Yep. It's not very effective. You're going yep. to do more damage than that. So it gives you a free opportunity to say, mm -hmm. oh, let's get the Incineroar back onto the field. Like we're going to see now it drops the Intimidate onto the field. You're resisting the Chi Yu's attacks. You're resisting, well, you're, you're not really going to be affected by the, uh, the, the Urshifu, like I've already mentioned. But then you've mm -hmm. got the fake up the next turn to potentially help you set up another Trick Room and really close this game out. Exactly that. And I think just being able to capitalize off of that that uh, defensive uh, protects from both of Hengwei's turns. Oh, they're just taking you even further back right now. It's quite tough when you're having to deal with Porygon 2 that just uh, at, at no realistic point is it going to be leaving this battlefield right now in game one. And sort of Alex getting a really good pincer lock here right now. Just saying, right, you're either going to have to go on the defensive uh, or you're going to have to try to go on the offensive and I'll still have fake out available. And you're not going to realistically get rid of the Porygon 2 and pick up a KO, right? Not really, not here, because you've got that active fake out. You are going to, you know, utilize it here. Alex really showing how well he, he can play this team. He's piloting himself perfectly here. Timing it correctly, where, you know, Hengwai going oh. for his only out here. If he gets the flinch here, it's not going to be able to get the Trick Room up. Unfortunately, ah. not the case. Getting another Trick Room up, and like you say, putting that pin set in motion, closing this game down, making it very difficult for Hengwai to operate under these Trick Room environment. Yeah, it's just masterclass of board positioning right here. Just being able to <clears throat> weigh in on this Porygon 2's uh, Poison Terror is such a good strategy for this matchup. Uh, you're able able to, you're sort of forcing both the Chi Yu and the Fluttermane, if you're going to be finding them paired up in the lead, to focus down on that slot or at least commit a Terra for additional damage. And just being able to subset that with that Poison Terra has been really, really proving dividends. Yeah, and we are going to see the Protect here from that Chi Yu, just wanting to try and get through these turns as we do see a recover from <laughs> the Porygon 2, there just putting go. itself in a bit more of a healthy position, like just it started the battle with. So it's going to be ready to go into the Chi Yu potentially 
the next turn. But it does leave the Urshifu a little bit open to go for an attack. It is going to go for the Surgeon Strikes. Not going to be quite enough damage, though. Not what Heng Wai is looking for. No. Uh, and at this point, we know how powerful of a Pokemon this uh, uh, Rapid Strike Urshifu is. Not even being able to bring it down to half. Just barely missing. And this situation, you got Trick Room set up. you got an Amundius in the back. you got Incineroar. That all it needs to do is either go for um, any sort of defensive play. I don't see a reason why Alex should go for it. You know you can lock up the game with the Amundius in the back, whether via redirection of the um, Rapid Strikes or just going for the Spores. And yeah, there we go. We see the riding on the wall. Henway puts in a forfeit for game one, giving Alex the, the win. Masterclass of how to utilize Trick Room and really exploit a weakness in your opponent's team for being able to manage that environment. I think it really was just Alex showing how well his team can perform against something which is going to struggle against it. Heng Wai is going to be have a really hard time mm -hmm. stopping this Trick Room. I think the Poison Trustalization on the Porygon 2 yep. is very unique, something that we don't generally see too much, you know, and it gives it such good resistances, gets rid of that fighting weakness in particular, yeah. and against things that it's going to be weak against and see a lot in the format, mm -hmm. like the Fluttermane, it's such a good advantage, especially with that, that Terror Blast that it can take advantage of in yeah. it and out of its Trustalized state. Yeah. And I think uh, it would be great if Hengwei had taunt on uh, his Tornadus. However, it does not. It does have double weather, which is great utility to actually see. Um, with the Clover Cloak, that would have been an option for himself. But in this scenario, I feel like you have to lean in a bit into the fake-out pressure to at least slow down this Porygon 2 rather than go on the pure offensive. Because, yeah, sure, going on the offensive would be great if... You know, such Pokemon as Chi Yu and Fluttermane, which are known to be absolute special attack powerhouses, most of the time will pick up KOs, but we've got a Porygon 2 on the field. <laughs> it has Eevee Light, it has the capability to tear away and actually have a resistance versus Fairy, which we know Fluttermane loves terrestrializing into, accompanied by the Choice Spec. So you're already not able to guarantee that first turn double focus KO into the Porygon 2 you sort of have to maybe approach it from a different way of disruption. Yeah, I think one of the things that Heng Wai could look at is, you've quite rightly pointed out, the double weather on the Tornadus. Now, you can support other Pokemon that you've got access to, like the Chi Yu, potentially with that sunny day, making that heat wave even more powerful, right? And then you just do that, right? Turn mm -hmm. one, you've got the Covert Cloak on the Tornadus. You don't worry about that fake-out support yeah. from the opposite side of the field. And you might have to commit to go into the grass terrestrialization, right, in that yeah. situation. But is it a bad thing if you're able to get the damage required to really stop Alex in his tracks because that's what you're gonna have to do you're gonna have to lay down that initial damage yeah. it's very difficult because if the Porygon 2 gets into that situation it's got recover so it can really undo any damage that's already been done yeah as we are going to see the exact same lead from Alex Asai. Very safe, very strong lead versus Henway's adaptation here. No longer having a Fluttermane on the field, we do have that urge for Rapid Strike. So perhaps Henway trying to focus down on directly threatening the Incineroar or even opting to go for a uh, Dark Pulse, allowing the Chi Yu maybe to pick up a flinch. That could be an option here. That is one option that Heng Wai has access to, right? And it is a play where he can say, okay, well, I'm probably going to have to take a fake out here from the Incineroar, so I either switch out the Urshifur or I keep it in and protect it this yep. turn. So I've got it to use the next turn. My only way to stop the Trick Room, mm -hmm. realistically, is to get a Dark Pulse Flinch. Yeah. And you've got to hope in that situation that the Incineroar goes for the fake out into the Urshifu and not the Chiyu, and Alex predicting maybe the Protect on that Urshifu because of the threat from the fake out here. But then if you don't fake out into the Urshifu, you get punished for it we're not going to see that this turn we're not going to see it but we are going to see a snarl instead being opted so wanting to try to reduce the damage output of this Porygon 2 uh, due to the offset of download right here makes a lot of sense and we saw how powerful it actually was well placed in that game one because of its ability it has set up trick room but at least there's some sort of disruption game going on rather than going on the full offensive yeah and I quite like what Hengwa is doing here because I think if you look back to that first game where he was able to parting shot out and get the 
Ian Mungison to catch the Urshifu and really kind of punish the Surging Strikes into that slot. You don't have the kind of freedom to do that just yet because you've got that Chi Yu on the field, right? And it is threatening with potentially a heat wave this turn. Mm -hmm. Although the dimensions have been turned, nothing's really in risk of getting knocked out this turn on Heng Wai's side of the field. So he has led very smartly here. Yeah. Was he going for the, the Snarl as well, reducing the attack power on the Porygon? Yeah. So it's not hitting as hard. A really nice play and setting him up to get some big damage onto Alex's side of the field for the first time. You're going to see oh, a Terra Blast oh, oh, oh. Terra Blast with the normal typing actually does support the same type attack. Bonus boost they will be getting onto the Chi Yu, not dealing that much damage at all. However, we do have the parting shot here, wanting to reposition this Incineroar. Likely, perhaps going to be that Amoongus as a candidate, but we do have a bit of a sneak peek, a preview. It is a Ting Lu. That's another very good choice right here. You're able to just slow down this uh, offensive special attack pressure from the Chi Yu. Yeah, and because you've got that parting shot off just now with the Incinero reducing the attack power on the Urshifu. I mean, the close combats are going to be hitting for less damage, but you've still got to worry if you bring in the Ting Lu here, if it locks into that Surging Strikes to kind of cover bases between that and a Heat Wave from the Chi Yu, then you still are going to be susceptible to take some big damage this next turn. Right. And uh, worth noting as well, it was an attack boost on that Porygon 2 with the download before, so it is at minus one special attack right now, susceptible to the close combat from from Hengwei's Urshifu, but because of the parting shot, it's not going to be dealing as much damage, and the Heat Wave is not going to be able to follow up because the Team Lu is on the field, baby. That's a great play there from Alex, because I think without that Vessel of Ruin ability, it would have probably went down to that follow-up Heat Wave, doubling up, and you can see the importance of that parting shot here from the Incineroar onto the Urshifu, reducing the damage of that close combat as well. So Abel now in a position to get a recover off, just like we mentioned at the start of this game able to undo all of that damage all the good work that hang has done so far ting Liu on the field now does threaten big damage onto the chi yu and that's why we're seeing it retreat indeed what is it retreating for is the real question it is going to be the real boom now having fake out pressure available on henway's side you're able to at least even threaten some really powerful grass type moves uh, most notably the wood hammer in the subsequent turn but We've got a terrestrialization, and it is a Team Loot, and it is yet again a Poison Terror, but not the P2. Yeah, <laughs> Poison Terror type again, but the opposite side of the field here for, Eric, uh, for Alex as he goes for that recover with mm. the Porygon 2 here, taking the opportunity to get some of that valuable health back, and we're going to see a Stomp and Tantrum into the Urshifu. Do some oh. nice, respectable damage there as a Surgeon strikes this time into the Porygon 2. Going to ignore that attack drop from the parting shot earlier on and get some very good damage in particular with how he's positioned that Rillaboom mm -hmm. now to have that active fake out really make it difficult for the Porygon 2 to be able to get another recover off freely this next turn. As we're in a position right now, the Porygon 2 is at the weakest it's ever been in between Game 1 and Game 2. But we know it does have access to recover, but because that fake out is on the field from the Rillaboom, it may want to slow down its offense, its capability of being able to recover all of that HP. Uh, Ting Lu may be well positioned to try to focus down on the KO. It might be able to pick it up on the Urshifu, but you've got to take into consideration this Incineral might be switching in right now. He wants to get the Intimidate down. It wants to have Fake now available on the following turn. The real question is, can Henway read that if that play does come out? Yeah, I mean, if you're Alex here as well, it's a great opportunity. If you want to get rid of the drops onto the Porygon 2 and avoid and maybe get knocked out to switch it out here for something like the Amoongus because the mm. threats on the field right now aren't going to cause Amoongus any problems at all. So we are going to see a switch up, but it isn't the Porygon 2. It is the Amoongus coming in for that Ting Lu. It is as actually a defensive play from this Urshifu, being well aware of the threat of the Team Lu. No fake out. We have the recover on the Porygon 2. Going to be bringing that HP straight back up. And of course, the high horsepower trying to focus down on what was that Team Lu, the Poison Terror Team Lu, more precisely. And yeah, we're in a scenario that Amoongus is just such a good Pokemon to switch in and immediately threaten with potential potential redirection or sleep. 
Yeah, and it also has access to that Pollen Puff we know so well on this Pokemon where it can start topping up the Porygon <laughs> yeah. too, so it doesn't really have to rely on that Recover so much. It allows it to perform a little bit more offensively. And also, you've got to worry if you are the Rillaboom as well because you can obviously take a lot of damage from that Pollen Puff in, uh, in the meantime if it is targeting into that slot. Are you not really a safe switch in for that move either because it will take damage from it? And all the while, the Urshifu is going to be taking chip damage along the way and has to really be careful of that rage power that the Amoongus has access to to support its fellow Pokemon. And a lovely switch in right here. You're able to not only get that Intimidate on the field, but because you've got Amoongus on this side, it directly threatens the Spore into that slot. And unless there's any sort of high horsepower critical hits coming out from the Rillaboom targeting down that slot, I do not see this Incineroar moving at all, which is the case. It's absolutely able to shrug off that very normal, powerful wood hammer there. And yeah, Urshifu, in this scenario, not being able to capitalize off of anything. Not really, not now, not it is asleep, and it is taking a guaranteed sleep turn. So it has a possibility to wake up, of course, but yeah. I think the control that Alex has got on the field right now, dropping another Intimidate, going to be able to go for another parting shot this next turn to take advantage of maybe getting the Incineroar off the field, get the Porygon 2 back onto the field, get those stat drops that it was subjected to earlier in the game, we said it's going to be hitting a lot harder, and then get another Trick Room up at the right time to really be able to take advantage of his slow Pokemon in this team, making it difficult along the way with the Urshifu taking a, a considerable amount of damage already, not going to be able to take too many more attacks uh, from Alex's side of the field. If he can get his board position well, but I mean, board position right now, not looking too bad at all. No, not at all, as we've got the redirection coming out from this um, moon, just, just in case the Urshifu does wake up here, but it does not. Question is right now, high horsepower deals really good-ish damage, I'd say, even at minus one, but guess what? It's going straight down to minus two, and we're just seeing this revolving door of Pokemon right here from Alex's side, and that's the sort of uh, benefits that you're able to obtain by having this core four Pokemon right here. You've got a lot of bolt. You've got a lot of potential for recovery. And, and then that's escorted by uh, further damage mitigation on the physical side with that Intimidate of the Incineroar accompanied by the Fake Out Pressure. So there's a lot of tools in Alex's arsenal here. Yeah, a lot of tools, a lot of flexibility being able to switch out, a lot of good synergy between the team against what the big threats are. Uh, on Hengwai's side of the field. And I think it's really testament to what Alex's playstyle kind of suits. He, he's like at home with this kind of like team concept. This this uh, archetype of team really feels good about it. Obviously showcasing it perfectly here and not really like ever overcompensating and taking any risks, I think, yeah. in this battle. Just really taking it very slow, doing what he needs to do to kind of Eek away, chip away at Hengwai's side of the field. And I we're going to see here, we're going to see another Trick Room set up. There isn't really much that Hengwai can do to prevent this either. No, and I think that's sort of what Hengwei really needs to try to manage uh, the best because board position so far is extremely in favor of Alex's side. And no, unfortunately, I think the only out there would have been a critical hit with the wood hammer to bypass the minus two attack there, accompanied by, of course, the grassy surge could have further boosted and allowed maybe some sort of KO, but this is still a board on two. I wouldn't put it put it past it <laughs> for actually surviving that combination of multipliers there. Yeah, I think maybe it probably would have been able to kind of see itself through that turn, get into this trick room environment. Again, the Moongus is going to threaten that spore once again onto the Chi Yu here. There is no way you know, it has to protect or switch out. Now, you could play a game where you switch out the Chi Yu into the Urshifu because you know it's already asleep if you suspect the Spore into that slot because you've probably not got the offensive power right now to be able to take it down. And it does threaten a knockout onto the Amoongus if it can get a Heat Wave off, of course, and considerable damage to the Porygon 2 as well. But it's such a safe option for the Porygon 2 just to sit on the field, maybe go for a cover this turn and then switch that Amoongus out to the Incineroar. You've got active Fake Out again. You're dropping another Intimidate down on onto the Rillaboom, and you're in a much better place to start getting some big damage onto the field the next turn. As we're gonna actually have a switch out here, Rillaboom wants to maybe preserve its grassy terrain for further future turns, but getting that recovery, but no, with no protect, uh, no switch outs for that GU, just the spore straight into the slot right there. It will be burning this first turn of sleep, and the Terra Blast, normal type, is able to actually pick up the KO. We know that Urshifu's uh, a very frail, 
fail when it comes to their special defense, but wow, that, that port on two, it's got some really good training there, Lee. Really good training, just showing off the ability to not only be a very strong supportive Pokemon, but a very dangerous offensive threat as well in the right situations. And now losing the Urshifu, although it was asleep, it is one of the key components that Hengwai could like lean on a little bit to be able to do some significant damage to Alex's side of the field, but Alex not really allowing that at all. You're seeing taking advantage and not taking any chances, going for that spore into the Chiyu, saying, well, I could potentially go for the double up into the other slot. I could switch an Incineroar, but no, if you don't protect here, I'm going to punish you with yeah. the spore. I'm not really losing anything by going for that. And I've shown how, you know, relaxed he is, taking it very slow in this game. And now he's in the position where he can potentially switch out either the, the Amoongus for that Incineroar now, get another Intimidate, which is going to be important down into the Rillaboom because it has reset those Intimidate drops that it took previously. And the Woodhammer did still do a lot of damage. So double up could be a problem, but the Chi Yu Asleep is a big advantage for Alex to be able to get this playoff a bit more securely. Well called as we do, of course, see that Incineroar and Recover play coming out right now. And sort of we're in the point of the game where we're actually, I was going to say, we haven't seen a Pokemon being KO'd on Alex's <laughs> side, but uh, of course, Henway beat me to it right there, as we do finally see the Incineroar going down. So a nice um, focus choice in there. I think it was relatively safe. Um, Henry didn't go completely out of the board with a read there, because he's still going to try to hit the Amoongus for neutral in that scenario. But we've still got the three real problematic Pokemon uh, available on Alex's yeah. side at pretty much max HP, if not. That's the problem. You kind of forget at some points that the Ting Lu is still sitting in the back and it is terrestrialized. Yeah. It is going to be able to come in. A nice call there from Heng Wai, though, to get the high horsepower into that slot. Like you say, there wasn't really a safe switch in for Alex in that situation and is able to pick up a knockout onto that really infuriating Pokemon that's cycling in and out yeah. with the fake out support and the Intimidates. That's not an option for Alex anymore. The Rillaboom having some joy in this match, but again, in a position now where the Chi Yu, if it stays asleep, this turn likely going to get knocked out. The Rillaboom going to take a lot of damage from either an Ice Beam that the Polygon 2 has access to or even a Terra Blast. So it really is threatened this turn. And the Chi Yu, even if it does wake up, not really going to be able to do as much damage because of the ability. The Vessel of Ruin is kind of cancelling out Chi Yu's ability that would normally be so oppressive in this situation. Ooh, and we finally get the reveal of the final Pokemon on Henway's side being the Flutter Main, wanting to try to bring it in here as a potential defensive switch. And in combination with the Ghost Terra type here, wanting to shrug away and be completely immune to any sort of normal type Terra Blast coming out from the Porygon 2, which is not the case, or any sort of super effective ground type moves, which is once again not the case, as we see a double up actually going into the Flutter Main, allowing this Chi Yu to try to connect its moves, but Porygon 2 unfortunately did actually evade that heat wave, and um, yeah, it, we're in combination with the grass uh, terrain on the field, Field. Uh, this Ting Lu is just starting to get that recovery going again. Yeah, and that is a huge survival for the Flutterman, but just probably uh, it needs a little bit more time because I think with the Trick Room still in effect, it is going to be a real sitting duck to get knocked out this next turn from anything coming from the Porygon 2 or the Ting Lu. You can safely go for an Ice Beam into that slot if you are the Porygon 2. Mm -hmm. Great to get the Chi Yu waking up there. Going to be able to do some significant damage, choosing and opting for that Ghost Terrestrialization. Probably the best choice at this stage in the game. But you've still got the Rillaboom in the back, so there is still a few options here for Hengwai to take advantage of going deeper into this game. As we are going to see the Protect coming out from Chi Yu completely get ignored by the Porygon 2, which does go ahead and bring Henry down to his final two Pokemon right here. The Ting Lu actually trying to go for Snarl in that scenario. Makes a lot of sense. Be able to likely pick up the KO onto that Flutter Main in combination, of course, with the Beads of Ruin available on the field and start further mitigating the damage output of this Chi Yu. So uh, going into this, I think uh, there were quite a few options for Ting Lu in that scenario. You could even go for Ruination or try to go for the Stomping Tangent to at least get some same type attack bonus focus onto that Chi Yu, but maybe take into consideration any sort of Rillaboom switches. Yeah, and the Rillaboom's got access to that high horsepower, which does threaten the, the Ting Lu for super effective damage. And it's not as easy for Alex in this situation to get in the Amoongus. As you can see here, the Heat Wave is something 
something that Heng Wang's going to lock into here. Ooh. The double up, not quite enough to get the Ting Lu, though. No fake out coming out this turn. As we are going to see a snarl to reduce that special attacking power from that Chi Yu. Do a little bit of chip to the Rillaboom along the way. But this leaves the Porygon 2 open to get that Trick Room set up there it once goes. again. <laughs> the, the Duck knows what it wants to do, and the Duck does what it needs to do. And uh, that is literally why we do have, of course, the Trick Room set up right now. Um, grass Terrain is on the field. Rillaboom does have access, of course, uh, to uh, the Grassy Glide. But the question right here is you just need to try to get rid of this Ting Lu. But then, Lee, you've got to deal with an Amundus, and you need that <laughs> Chi Yu to deal with the Amundus. You do. Uh, it's, it's a tricky situation, especially once the Trick Room goes back up. I think it's very difficult not only to deal with the Ting Lu, but to deal with this Porygon 2 as well. You can see that the Snarl's already come out into the Chi Yu, so it's not going to be hitting for as much damage. The grassy terrain's on a timer now. It's only got so long left to, to be on the field, right? And we are going to see an ice beam into that really boom. How much damage? Doing 50% damage. Some big damage here. And another snarl to re further reduce that special attack, make it even more difficult for Heng Wai to get a grip of this match. Exactly. And something to note, of course, we did have the special attack. Increased stage for that download ability with the Porygon 2. Time has just popped up. Team Lu's just been knocked out. And all of a sudden, Lee, we've got a two versus two scenario. Yeah, but I think the valuable thing and the small thing that Alex has been doing is firing off those snarls. It could have been so easy for him to just go for the stomp and tantrums to get a bit more damage onto that Chi Yu. But knowing that the end game is going to come down to the Porygon 2 and that Amoongus, and it's going to be so threatened by those heat waves from the Chi Yu, and potentially a heat wave double up with uh, a high horsepower, which could threaten a knockout. I think the value is in those snarls, reducing that special attack on the Chi Yu to make sure that your Amoongus can come in, disrupt with those spores. You've got the trick room up, you can put anything to sleep. Yep. Well, not anything. You can't put oh, the Rillaboom to sleep, but you can that. put that Chi Yu to sleep for a turn. You can put the Porygon to as well, <laughs> if you really want well, you to. you could do, yeah. <laughs> Just really spice it up. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, we're going to be going ahead and seeing a Protect come out right here. Ice Beam, because of the damage before, does guarantee the KO onto the Rillaboom. Unfortunately, leaving Henway in a scenario where, realistically, Lee, the only thing I can see as some sort of out is going for the double, triple Protect here. Yeah, I think you have to. You've got to go for it. It's your only way. Uh, I just don't see a way for Heng Wai at this stage. Minus two special attack to get through this Porygon 2. Maybe the Amoongus, right? But the Ice Beams are what it has to rely on. It can't go for the Terra Blast now, but you can see a critical yeah. hit coming out and doing a little bit too much damage for Heng Wai's liking. Yeah. Still asleep as well. Exactly. I think just having that absolute lockdown uh, on display from Alex has been exceptional. You know, just being in a scenario where you can position yourself to the point where you're able to just rule out a game purely with the defensive switches has been really fascinating to watch. But we did have a wake up there from the Chi Yu. It did get the first protect off. There was an ice beam focus as well from the Porygon 2 going into the slot. Oh, I mean, uh, most of the times, even though Trick Room has been expired right now, there's some chance maybe Maybe, but how, you're never getting rid of this Porygon 2. Not and, now, right? not at this stage. No. Not with the protecting Moongus in front of you where it can just protect itself for one <laughs> turn. The Chi Yu can go for all of the attacks at once. It's not going to have enough to ever take down this Porygon 2. Not even with a critical hit, oh, I don't wow. think. Where it is just able to, once again, switch the dimensions up, put everything in Alex's favor, set up another spore, another ice beam, and that will be enough to lock up this game for Alex. An absolute masterclass from our current NAIC champion, Alex Gomez. And what a display as well 